Our reading is from Rays of the One Light, Weekly Commentaries on the Bible and Bhagavad Gita. Truth invites, it never commands. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. Free will is a basic principle of life. God never coerces. He invites us to live in a way, to live in such a way that we find fulfillment in ourselves. If we refuse to live rightly, Paramahansa Yogananda taught, God simply says, I will wait. We have eternity to live. In that eternity, we live as we choose. In self-created darkness, a darkness as intense and as long-lasting as we choose, or in the infinite light, the true self, which is God. Jesus Christ, in the Beatitudes, offered a beautiful example of God's way of inviting mankind to seek perfection, not by commanding, but by offering his human children the incentive they need to choose the right of their own volition. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In each of the Beatitudes, Jesus explains the blessing attendant upon observing it. The divine way, similarly for each of us, is not to do violence to our own natures. Spirituality must be attained naturally. It can never be attained by force. The Bhagavad Gita says in the third chapter, Even the wise behave in accordance with nature as it is manifested in them. Of what avail then is suppression? The scripture then goes on, however, to explain that this doesn't mean we should surrender to the dictates of our lower nature. Rather, it emphasizes our need to aspire to the heights. But each of us, in accordance with his own nature, and not in imitation of anyone else's, offering ourselves up for purification by divine grace, desire, whatever form it takes, so the Bhagavad Gita explains, should be resisted, even if only mentally. Attachment and repulsion to sense objects, both of these are universally rooted. No one should accept their influence, for verily, they are man's enemies. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. so nice to be here. Thank you for joining us. Our subject this morning is truth. And although we normally begin these talks with a reading from Whispers from Eternity, uh, I would like instead to share some excerpts, excerpts from another book of Yogananda's wisdom, The Essence of Self-Realization. These excerpts uh, Speak to our theme today. Truth simply is. It cannot be voted into existence. It must be perceived by every individual 
in the changeless self within, in the changeless self that is God. Better a truth stated by one saint than a dogma avowed by millions. Never accept an idea merely because it has won popular approval. Don't be deceived by life's outward show. Its glamour is superficial. Look behind appearances to the eternal truth within. The truth is unique. For whereas the ways of error are many, the way out of error is only one. Truth is a deeply serious subject. In its highest expression, uh, we might even say that it's another word for God. In our daily lives, however, we must uh, also deal with other truths, truths of a lesser expression. And some of these, if we're not careful, can get us into rather tricky and sticky situations. And uh, here's one that that got a good laugh out of me. It's the story of uh, a very likable family that lived next door to a family that wasn't so likable. They hardly spoke to each other. And so the mother of the likable family had an idea to uh, open the door to greater harmony and friendship, she invited these neighbors to dinner. And when they had sat down at the table, she asked her five-year-old son to say grace. Well, he was shy and he didn't know what to say, so she coached him. She said, remember, dear, what daddy said This morning when we sat down to breakfast, why don't you say what he said? (laughs) Obediently, the boy repeated, oh God, those awful people are coming to dinner tonight. (laughs) He was just speaking the truth, which must have caused quite a stir, I'm sure. Uh, Clearly, there is a category of truth that needs to come with a warning of handle with care. The truth as we refer to it most of the time, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, is uh, not the whole truth. And it is not the highest truth. So uh, let's turn our focus to that which is. A few minutes ago, we we heard that truth invites, it never commands. If that statement is true, and I trust that it is, God has uh, created truth as an option. At least that is how uh, we are likely to, uh, to think of it. An invitation, after all, is something that we can either accept or decline. And does that mean that, you know, truth is is just a take-it-or-leave-it choice? What happens when we choose to give it a pass? Well, I'm sure we all know the answer to that. Over the course of many lifetimes, we have learned the hard way that there are invitations that it can prove costly to uh, turn down or not respond to. And yet, as we look around the world today, what we see is a terrible lack of that understanding. We see people in all walks of life, from ordinary citizens to the heads of state, attempting to ignore God's truth, sometimes with disturbing regularity, the consequences of which uh, are often deplorable. Why, why is this still going on? Why do we uh, 
sometimes look at truth as being inconvenient. It doesn't take rocket science to figure this out. Now entering stage left, the ego, the infamous ego. You may not be able to see it at the moment, but it's been there all along, just waiting to sweep us into uh, any score of attempts to find pleasure, pleasure in the outside world. Beware its, its uh, dangling goodies, which always seem to remain just out of reach, don't they? The ego doesn't mean to cause trouble or to be a tease, but it can't help itself because it is always looking for, for pleasure, for its happiness in the outside world, out there, attempting to create and sustain the joy that can only be created and sustained within ourselves. Now, please, for the, for the next few minutes, don't take anything personally, because I know that you and I are far beyond having any egoic issues. <laughs> but for the sake of discussion, I'll mention some of the problems that, that other people have. <laughs> You know, perhaps even some, some people that, that you know. So when I say <laughs> we or, or you, uh, know that I'm, I'm just referring to everybody else. <laughs> because of the ego's uh, constant search for happiness in, in worldly pursuits, uh, its merry ride tends to run out of gas. But... Oh, how the ego hates to take the blame when its plans, its desires, its, its advice uh, don't pan out as, as expected. It is loath to admit a mistake, especially if that mistake might uh, result in public embarrassment. So the ego tries to cover its tracks. It may uh, invent excuses or seek to, to blame others. It might even fabricate uh, something that is untrue, such as alternative facts about <laughs> you know, what, whatever might have happened. Now, it, it, it's only natural, of course, that we want to make the, the best impression in, in every situation. And the ego is very good at positing ways that we can do this. Uh, we might, for example, exaggerate a little on a, on a resume or slightly change a story to make ourselves look, look more appealing. Or maybe if uh, we have promised to do something and we don't show up to do it, we say, well, you know, uh, a cousin or my grandmother died, and, and, I, and I just had to attend to that. And it's, it's funny. I, I lived in India for a few years, and uh, this excuse is fairly common over there. Uh, I'm not meaning to cast aspersions uh, because we all have our, our issues. But... Uh, if you're the person who has been waiting in vain for someone to show up to fix your plumbing or, or paint your house, it can, can, you know, be very, very frustrating. And it's, it's not uncommon over there to uh, have the person say, well, I, I couldn't show up because uh, a close relative suddenly passed away. And you, of course, you say, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. And after you've heard this explanation a number of times from perhaps this person and others, you begin to wonder if it's, if it's really true. And uh, this, you know, becomes even more interesting when you, you may discover later on that the, uh, 
the person who passed away managed to, by some miracle, resurrect, uh, you know, apparently none the worse for wear, and, uh, you know, perhaps ready to die again as another excuse, you know, might be needed. Uh, we're, we're funny, and, you know, we're just as funny as they are in our own ways. The ego is, is one crafty dude, or dudette, if yours has a female orientation. Uh, and we pay a price when we give it control of our lives. The question we have to ask ourselves is how much misguided counsel are we willing to endure before we shift our allegiance to a source of wisdom that is reliably safe. In Sanskrit, there is a phrase that tells us exactly where and why we should shift our allegiance. Yato Dharma Tata Jaya. It means where there is right action, there is victory. Right action is a function of truth. And it is one of the cornerstones of Ananda's philosophical foundation as well. Other choices will often appear easier or more convenient to take than truth. But truth will never lead us astray, and we will never need in following the truth to cover our tracks. There's another good reason to choose truth over the uh, advice of the ego. Truth with a capital T is married to karma with a capital K. And nothing that we desire or do escapes karma's notice. For every transgression, large or small, uh, karma exacts and levies a tax. For, for crossing the line. It may be in this lifetime, it, it, it may be in another. But truth is the law of the universe, and karma makes sure to uphold it. So it's correct to say that, that truth invites, but failing to accept that invitation is pretty risky business. As Jesus said, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I want to close by, by shifting the focus just a little bit to something I strive to remember as a guiding principle in my life. Today and every Sunday, our reading is from Rays of the One Light. And that reading begins with the same two sentences. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. In those 14 words, Swami Kriyananda captured the very essence of what we are here to understand and accomplish. He wanted us hearing those words over and over again, etching them just deeply into our consciousness, into how and, and what we think. So let's just take a couple of minutes and, and examine those sentences a little more carefully. The truth that is one is not just any truth. It is the truth, the absolute overarching reality that exists throughout the universe. It's constant in every circumstance, 
without contradiction. It is the truth that God is one, the source of all that is. The truth, this truth, is also eternal. It is never, 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 ever ending. Though eternity is more than the, the human mind can grasp, we are here to know by means of intuition that we are of that truth, that we are a consciousness that now and forever is of God. It is only the fog of delusion that remains between us and everlasting joy. Realize oneness with it. To realize is to experience. We have to experience the oneness of truth in every fiber of our being. We cannot merely read about it, listen to lectures about it, or download it from, from some internet site. Nor is it uh, an exercise that reason can accomplish, reason alone, because reason bears the handicap of our human limitations. We can only realize oneness by receiving it by opening heart and mind to God's flow of intuitive understanding. What we receive in deep meditation, in that higher state of divine awareness and communion, is the essence of truth itself. In your deathless self within, these last five words speak to our immortality, to the soul within us that is of God. The consciousness that we are that is deathless is an indivi indivisible aspect of the self, self with a capital S. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. When you take that deeply into your awareness, you find it changes your whole perspective on life. What matters most now and always is our attunement to who we truly are. The invitation is there. It does not command us to accept it. But when we do, there is peace, there is freedom, there is bliss. God bless you. Let's take just a moment of reflection.